Continue. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> So like I said, we're going to have this panel on local development environments. Um, this is our inaugural, inaugural panel. Um, we have people from, well, I wouldn't say all the platforms, you know, but, but certainly ones that we're all accustomed to seeing and that sort of thing. And the idea behind this was we wanted to kind of ask questions. What does your environment do? Um, where do you see yourself in the future? Where's your documentation? Just sort of have a Q and A. You know, whatever questions you have for them, we can kind of surface those. So we'll do like a, a brief um, introduction, and they all talk about a couple points of their thing, and then we'll go into a Q and A. So you've got the slide. I have the slide. <laughs> <laughs> so we start with who's here today. Uh, we'd all like to move forward. Let's move back. Um, just go along the line here and introduce ourselves. My first? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Will Jackson. I work for Canopy Studios. I've been uh, involved with Drupal for over 10 years. Um, I have worked a lot with different hosting solutions, both locally and in production environments. Um, the past five, six years, I've been really focusing on the, the local development and development hosting side of things. Um, so I've tried out a lot of different platforms, and uh, currently I'm here representing Dotsol. Tess Flynn. I have been around Drupal since Drupal 4.7. Um, I created FlightDAC. I'm uh, John Millett. I work with Tandem. I've been around Drupal for probably like eight years now. Uh, we made Lando. Uh, my story is very similar, similar except my name is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Kevin Bridges of CyberSquad and the Drupals. Uh, I've been doing Drupal for a while too. Uh, so, uh. Okay, cool. Let's move yeah. on a little Sorry. bit. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm Amy Jean Heinlein. I'm a community ambassador, and that's one of the things is like I always hear like one environment is better than another environment. But as an open source community ambassador, I love everybody. So that's why I wanted to put together this panel with all of our people. And I work with Canopy, and I work in the WordPress and Drupal space. So. And I'm Ellie Ludvigson. I have been in the Drupalverse since 2013-ish, I guess. Uh, I'm currently working for Open Strategy Partners, and I <coughs> seem to be doing more marketing and strategy stuff than I had intended, but here we are. Uh, I'm also on the Drupal core mentoring team uh, in sort of a lead role, and we've used a variety of tools over the years. So it's been interesting to see all the options out there and everybody's got their favorite that's right for them. So we're here to show you everything and you can choose. So, so we'll start with Kevin. First up. Hi. Uh, so I think we just covered some of this, but I'm Kevin Bridges. Uh, I'm the founder and CTO of a company called Drum Technology. Um, we create DDEV, uh, DDEV Local and DDEV Live. Um, I've been basically working on uh, associated with DevOps in the Drupal space for a really long time. I got involved in some very large projects pretty early on. Uh, larger and larger development teams uh, basically being exposed really early on to what it takes to hand off a project from a development environment into an operations environment. And this is right around the time when Drupal was making the transition from hobbyist to enterprise. As we started dealing with larger and larger enterprises, we had to deal with more and more operations teams. And we had to explain how to keep these sites running and how to optimize them and why developers needed more rapid access and just a whole host of things. Uh, so out of that, uh, did a lot of um, uh, uh, basically agency work for a long time. Uh, moved from agency into product, uh, and I feel like Vita really helped solve a need for a lot of agencies, a lot of developers, and it's an amazing way to give back to the community. Um, a couple of features, uh, you know, we've got vita.meetthedocs.io. Uh, fully test driven from Mac, Windows, and Linux. We run test suites on everything that we do. Every single pull request goes through Mac, Windows, and Linux testing so that we know that it's working. We consider Windows to be a first class citizen. We consider Mac to be a first class citizen. And we consider Linux to be a first class citizen. Obviously, Linux is better than the rest. Um, but the other two are more widely used. Uh, so it, it's important to pay attention to all of them. We do have a very high quality metric that we wanted to 
good to uh, adhere to. Um, it independently functions as an API for interface or a CICD integration. Uh, if you go to our blog on drug.com, you'll see uh, one of the latest articles is, uh, I believe, uh, in association with Matt Guaman from Commerce Guys. He just went through, did a whole series on testing and using DF uh, as a local testing component. We've seen people tie it into uh, CICD systems because it is an API, essentially. Um, we've been able to have people white label interfaces for it because it is an API. It's very easy to plug into a React system. You can customize it, you can rebrand it, you can do whatever you want to with it. Um, it, it significant multi community support. Uh, we pay a lot of attention to the Type of 3 community in Germany, which is actually more prolific and more active than the Drupal community in these development spaces, if you can believe that. Uh, we cater to the Drupal community. We pay a lot of attention to things like Gatsby JS. Uh, we are very interested in uh, providing, I think, uh, an opinionated piece of software. And I, I was asked earlier, you know, what, what's the real difference between like Lando and, and Vita? Um, I think a good way of saying it is if you think of Lando as like the Linux of the development environments. You can put together amazingly complicated scenarios, you might have to get in there and get your hands dirty a little bit, maybe poke around, get things to work, it might not be a smooth thing, but eventually you'll get there and it's going to be awesome because you can do whatever it is that you want to do. We're, not, we're nihilists. Right. And, and PETA <laughs> might be more along the lines of like the Mac philosophy. We want it to just work. We want it to be very opinionated for people so that uh, somebody that's never been exposed to this type of development environment can come in, have the best of read in software, uh, uh, the X debug, you know, all kinds of cool stuff that takes a lot of energy to set up and basically get off and running very rapidly. Um, telemetry data driving for roadmap and bugs. Uh, so basically, we use telemetry data to drive our roadmap. Uh, basically, I, I'm getting you know upwards of up to 14,000 commands being run through DDEV in a typical 24 to 48 hour period. Um, and I'm able to see what commands people are running, what they're running more frequently than not, what's working for them, what's not working for them. I'm able to derive stack traces from instances where somebody tries something and it breaks. Um, it's all opt-in information, so, so it's not enabled by default. But it does help us drive the roadmap. It, it helps us adhere to that quality standard that we push forward to get. Uh, integrations, it's extremely pluggable. Uh, we basically come from uh, the Kubernetes group, which makes pluggable very important. Uh, so we support currently uh, Pantheon. Uh, Aqua Cloud is coming very soon. Um, it's extensible. It's a provider-based plugin. We're going to support DDEV Live. We can support platform. We can support any hosting provider that is willing to let us support them by opening up APIs to allow that type of integration. Uh, it's a pl pluggable service architecture, uh, which means that you can extend it and you can have whatever services you want to in it. If you have Redis or Node, or people know it's already there, but it, it, you can extend it. Uh, and it's opinionated. Um, so we try to provide tools that make things easy for people. Cool. Thank you. Moving right along. So, yeah. We kind of went over this earlier. My name is Will Jackson. Uh, we again work with uh, Canopy Studios. Uh, Canopy Studios, uh, I work in the support department. Uh, so primarily I focus on Drupal, but we also have a good bit of WordPress and a few other um, technologies like Gatsby and, and React uh, outside of the, the Drupal sphere. Um, and yeah, so again, uh, Doxel, uh, it's a really, really lightweight wrapper. Uh, it's based on Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, it's not, it, it's, not very opinionated. Uh, so if you would like to you know, use uh, like Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows or uh, you know, so the native Docker versus the VM approach with um, you know, Mac or uh, Windows, you can use that to um, you know, get better performance out of that. Um, also, it's, uh, it's very customizable. Uh, so again, it's not very opinionated, but uh, th that comes with a little bit more setup time. Uh, so whenever you're getting a project set up, um, you would need to, uh, depending on the project, so if you're creating up a new project, we do have um, ways that you can quickly create projects. I think we have 13 or 14 different uh, applications that you can start with. So uh, Drupal 8, Drupal 8, the composer version, uh, Drupal 7, um, <coughs> Gatsby, uh, plain HTML, if that's your thing. Uh, there's, there's a lot of um, kind of recipes or built or right out of the box. That's a point of a term, so sorry about that. But, um, but no, just like quick. So trademark, so. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
Um, but yeah, so we have, um, there are, there's a concept called stacks in Doxel. Uh, stacks are essentially just uh, some pre-configured YAML files, things like, you know, Apache versus Nginx versus um, uh, just basically different container sets that you would use for uh, specific applications. Um, and as far as the integrations, uh, Pantheon is, uh, we have Terminus uh, baked right into uh, the containers. Uh, so um, being able to you know, leverage the uh, Terminus API to build sites from Pantheon uh, is something that you could do uh, with custom commands. Um, and then the, uh, the concept of uh, custom commands too uh, is really kind of the bread and butter of Doxel in the current, in the current uh, time. So I mean, you can use those um, by default, it's, uh, most of them are provided in Bash, but I mean, you can use any kind of scripting language you like, Python, um, Symfony, PHP, any type of um, you know, scripting language that you would like to, put, to build this, you could do that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, additional um, plugins that are very easy to install, things like PHP MyAdmin, uh, just one, one line to get it installed, uh, get it configured. Um, and again, you know, we work uh, with a lot of different platforms, or at least a few of the major ones, you know, Drupal, WordPress, and a few others. And uh, it's nice to have one tool that our entire company can kind of consolidate on and use that across the in entire platform. Uh, so as far as documentation and knowing how to uh, get a project and get started, uh, it's just the same. So whether you're in WordPress, whether you're in Drupal, Drupal 7, Drupal 8, it's always the same. I mean, you clone the repo, fit in it with our custom commands that we've pre-configured uh, as a company. Uh, it's literally just one command to uh, stand up your site. Uh, so in those commands, uh, such as like and it is like a very common one, uh, that will um, you know initialize all your containers. It'll go out to you know, using Pantheon as, as an example. Uh, using Terminus will go out and grab a database from Pantheon, pull that down. Uh, and again, because it's very customizable, we have like reverse proxies that do things like remote file system hosting. Um, so you don't have to actually download the file system. You can just pull down the database, which ultimately comes into a very fast setup. Um, and then also less uh, requirements on your local machine as far as you know space requirements and things like that in order to uh, stand up your project. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we have a, a, I don't have a list here, but uh, docs.doxel.io, uh, we have a very uh, a, a newer, um, a, a new documentation site where uh, all of the documentation for installing this is there. And um, yeah, I think you know, as far as future we're looking into uh, kind of making you know Pantheon integrations a little bit more accessible, uh, so that it is uh, easier to configure out of the box without having to you know get your you know, roll your sleeves up with some custom commands. Um, but you know, once too, as far as Pantheon, you know, a lot of our projects are on Pantheon, and once you kind of create one good project, and then you kind of use that as a template for your you know going on board. So uh, for us, it's it's uh, really lightweight and really easy to use, um, and it's just I mean, it just works for us. Great, thank you. That's a few minutes. Yeah. I'm Tess Lynn. I created Flight Deck. I'm from a small Minneapolis company called 107. We do a lot of Drupal stuff. Uh, Flight Deck is a bit of a different modality than the rest of these. It's intended to be an incredibly minimal amount of stack. It provides you any, you know, only what you need in order to stand up a system. It supports any platform that Docker runs on. It has no special tooling outside of Docker itself. If it runs Docker, it can run Flight Deck. It works on Mac, Windows, and Linux out of the box very easily. It doesn't do anything special. It has all the tools baked in for you to do your Drupal development environment, SAS. Um, we removed Compass in the last version, finally. <laughs> uh, it has Ansible scripting. We can test Drush, Drupal console, all of the necessary tools in order to stand up your environment on it. One of the key advantages that it does have, it is literally the same containers that you use in development that you can use in Kubernetes for production. And we even have it supporting Docker Swarm as well. So it can support any Docker compatible <coughs> production environment, and it is security hardened out of the box. <coughs> Thank you. Which brings us to the window. Hi there. Uh, my name is Mike Pirog, as, uh, as mentioned previously. Um, I work at a company called uh, Tandem. We're a digital agency. We do primarily Drupal work, but we also do uh, WordPress and Laravel and Vue and other things. Um, and in our spare time, we make development tools. Uh, one such development tool is Lando, which is why I'm here today. Uh, we have a long history making local development tools. Uh, before this, in my previous company, Caluna, we made Calabox. Uh, learned a bunch of things doing that. I think Lando was a result of some of the lessons that we have learned during that process. 
Um, so Lando uh, is a local development environment and DevOps tool. Uh, Kevin was, gave a nice description of many of its features. They're very similar to the features that uh, DDEV has. Um, basically, the idea we talk, uh, behind Lando is you should be able to set up a small configuration file. These can be two-line configuration files. They can be long configuration files. Um, we're not very opinionated, but we do set same defaults. So if you want to like roll with the things we suggest on the box, you can have a very simple and on the box setup. If you want to do more complicated things, uh, you can certainly do that as well. If you want to install extra PHP extensions, or if you want to like set up a decoupled site, that's fine. Uh, but the primary idea behind Lando is you should be able to set up this configuration file. You should be able to put it into your Git repository. You should be able to clone the repository down on some other computer, run Lando start, and get all of the things that you need to develop and test your site. That includes all the infrastructure, all the tools, the testing suite, and it should, shouldn't matter whether you do that on your computer, on CircleCI, on Travis, on Windows, on Mac, on Linux. Um, and that means that you should be able to run PHP projects, .NET projects, main, uh, mean stack projects, Ruby projects, Python projects. So it's really meant to be sort of one tool to rule them all sort of scenario. Um, you can also use more advanced services like Solar, Redis, and Memcache, and Elasticsearch. If you go to our docs site, docs.devwithlando.io, um, it'll list all the things that we that you can spin up. There's like 15 different ones, six different languages that you can use. Um, so we really want it to be the one tool that you that you need to use for all of your development, regardless of whether you're doing Drupal or something else. Um, uh, the documentation that we have is very good, uh, especially recently with our new releases. We've, we've, been, we've been added quite a bit to it. If you can find something in the documentation that we support, or if you can find something that we support that is not in the documentation while you're at this camp, you can come to me. I'll buy you a beer. Um, so please accept my challenge, but not too many of you because I don't have too much money. Um, uh, so one of the other nice things about Lando is I think it's very, it's very sexy to talk about like how we are competitors with DDEV or with Doxel or Flight Deck. We don't look at it that way. Uh, we think that Lando is actually, we're trying to replace something like Vagrant. Um, we think that, uh, or, or uh, yeah, or MAMP. Um, we really want Lando to be a tool that you use to build other tools. So for example, uh, Pantheon's local development uh, environment that's going to be coming out soon is built on top of Lando. It's a GUI product, so in the Lando, Lando is CLI. Similar to DDA, we have like an API layer that you can use to sort of build things on top of it. We very much want to do that. Um, but we, you know, we don't consider like Lando to be Coke and DDA to be Pepsi and Doxel to be like Cola. You know, it's more of just like we think that Lando, uh, that you know, Doxel might be tea or <laughs> so maybe Doxel, uh, and that DDA might be Cola and like and like Lando might be whiskey. So they're all drinks, but they're not substitute because they're for very different audiences, looking for very different results. <laughs> it's interesting that you're going to be tea fast. <laughs> I like tea too, man. I mean, I am drinking coffee, but there's no tea outside, so. I mean, if there's whiskey outside, yeah. yeah. No. So that's like, do you want to add anything else? No, I mean, it's the culmination of, of many, many, many years of, of building, you know, very large scale enterprise sites. And, and I've used, yeah, because I'm mostly on the agency side, and I've used every tool that's here right now, and it will be on. Um, and I, I think the biggest differentiator, differentiator for us is that you can do, you can scale anything with Lando at 47 database clusters if you wanted to. You could use any tooling, any front end tooling you wanted to. You could do it in any language. Um, and, and as things have become grown and become more complex as the internet does, it, it's very easy to swap things out. It, it takes a second and you're off and running. Great. I have a question. <clears throat> Pirag, you mentioned um, a GUI, which is graphical user interface. Um, as a person who teaches people how to give back to Drupal, um, it's really hard for people to use the command line at first. So I'm wondering which projects here have a user interface. Do any of you have a user interface? Yeah. Do? Yeah. Okay. We, we, have, we have no intention of building a user interface, but uh, Pantheon has intentions to build mm -hmm. a user interface that will, if they're using Pantheon, then that would be a nice, and you don't like the command line, then um, and using their product would be a good, a good mm -hmm. option. And that's built on top of Lando, so you would be, by transitive property of software, you'd be using Pantheon. I don't think we can touch up as a user interface. We don't promote it as a local product, but we use it locally, and eventually there'll be a locally tuned one. But, uh, so, uh, yeah. John Pugh is here from DevShop. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about DevShop? Well, it's 
It is based on the area, which did get a pretty high percentage in the survey yearly guide did last year. Like basically, it, it's a Linux, it's, it's Drupal managing Drupal, and it's 10 years old, and it basically just automates creating sites. It doesn't do it with containers. I mean, there's a module that lets you do it with containers because it's Drupal, but it's core standard LAMP stack, um, and I built DevShop on top of it to more, be more of a, a CI solution like Godfrey Cloud, but I mean, I build it locally, so I use it locally, but I don't created as a product and promoted it as a local product, but it's possible to use it as one and eventually we'll have one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah, I think, I think it was Jeff Gearling did a survey to, of like every single tool you could possibly find. Yeah. Less At small Anchor. or something like that. And Eager, this 10 year old project was actually up around the top 10, I think, of oh, even local development tools. Because those of us that use Linux, it's like the fastest way to get people running on your native Linux desktop because they make a Debian package and you just like, mm -hmm. you don't have to mess with it. And Jesus um, from Wino was going to talk a little bit about their product, which is called Ahoy. Um, but he had other things he needed to do right now. But that's another local Ahoy. environment tool. Hmm? Oh, yeah, so it was called as Ahoy. Oh, yeah, Ahoy. <laughs> so, um, do you, any, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? Really? Really? Yes. Curious. What do people Anyone use? Yeah. Okay. Who uses Dev? Who uses Lando? Uh, who uses Ahoy? Okay. Uh, who uses uh, Doxel? And uh, who uses Flight Deck? Good to know. Cool. It's, it's just interesting. It, it just goes to the point that you know the, it, it's a common problem. That's why why it, it's not so much competition. It's not like where we're fighting for market share or anything like that. We're all solving a common problem that we know needs to be solved. And when you have a common problem like this, eventually it becomes commoditized, right? So, so what we're, what I feel that we're collectively doing is identifying what the next generation of these tools are going to be. And we're continuing to bring people into a focal point where it's like, okay, well, we no longer have to invent every single component of every single site that we're doing every single time that we want to start a project. We now know that there's an entire community and, and, and ecosphere of these tools that can abstract these things, make them easier. So over the course of time, I think what we're doing is we're changing the way people think about how they approach development. Um, and I think that's going to continue so that we also change the way that people think about how they deploy their development into these different providers or services. Um, the world's changing. Technology is really cool right now. And it, it's, it's just amazing. And I think it's, it's cooperation. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. What about uh, Aqua Dev Desktop? I don't know if use it. Don't worry. Okay. Use it. <laughs> yes. yeah. use what about MAMP? Sometimes. That's right. Yeah. Still, still, still active. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think what I saw a question about Native Apache too. installed from the yeah. new yeah. <laughs> That's right. It works too. Cool. I think I saw a question in the back there. Yeah, so I'm on Drupal VM right now. I get it's pretty slow. I guess that, it that's probably the beta problem, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, so, are your solutions all Docker based essentially, or they're all? Yeah, but there's a, a host, <laughs> a, a wide range of performance answers inside of it's just Docker. Um, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Continue. No, I don't really know what my question is, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a value like you know, the the, big, the the vagrant stuff has been working pretty well for the last couple of years. It just seems to get slower. Most of my clients or my coworkers are on Windows, so like that is a, it's important. I'm glad to hear it's going to be more of a first class system than it's maybe previously been. Um, are you just running one site on there at a time or putting them all on there? Yeah, so we have like, about a dozen sites total, but they're all in separate mm -hmm. containers. So separate usually I'm, only running, I'm only running one vagrant at a time. Like, but so, yeah, so. But they're all separate, it's not, you know, and they're all basically they're all just slow. simple seven sites, nothing super fancy. So you're saying they're all slow and even though they're different VMs? Yeah. yeah, they're all. It's not like slow, like, oh my god, well, it's just slow, like slower than it should be. You know, slow, like, like what? It's slowing down. Like, like the, my, my development itself is slow. Like, when I have to set up the, the VM itself, that takes about five to ten minutes. So, like, you, want to, you want to reload the configuration. Like, that's. So your cache is your. 
Yeah, it's just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so if you're, I, I can speak to, uh, for Lando and probably by extension DDEV a little bit. Um, so if you're, if you're using Docker and you're using Mac or Windows and your site is like a load of files, then it's, it very, very well could be slower to use our solution than Drupal VM. Mm -hmm. um, that said, like recently uh, DDEV has introduced a bunch of mitigating strategies to handle uh, the Docker performance slowdown. This is a very known issue if you Google slowness on Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, you'll get a whole bunch of very long issues. <laughs> Do not read them all, <laughs> you know, all day. Um, so, so, right, so by default, it's gonna be fairly slow, but uh, yeah, DDEV has introduced some mitigating strategies for that. Like, I'm interested to see how that goes. Now that Lando is getting close to like a stable release, we're gonna start introducing similar type things. Yep. Um, so I guess the TLDR is, it might be worth waiting a little bit before you switch if you're concerned about slowness until like the results of our testing, I guess, <laughs> right, so are more definitive. <laughs> basically, what we've been able to figure out is if you're on Mac, you're going to have the slowest experience. Mm -hmm. um, if you're on Windows, you're going to have a fairly more performant experience, but it's going to be less supported typically because Windows does things that you don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you're on Linux, it's going to rock. Yes, yeah, so very fast. The fastest thing I've ever seen. So awesome. Don't even hesitate switching. Um, so with DDEV, we did a couple of things. Basically, what we're doing, and, and, and one of the challenges of building on something like Docker, is that Docker is a moving technology and takes time to evolve, too. And it's not a mature technology, in my opinion. It's pretty yeah. cool what it does, but it's still still improve out of that was four years ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, with us, we, we introduced something a little while ago called WebCache, which was basically the ability to go through and cache the file system to some degree. Um, anytime you deal with caching, you end up getting stuck. Um, it, things are going to break. Uh, they're going to be hard to clear. There's going to be sticky bits. Things are going to get confusing. Uh, we decrease the, the prefer, or increase the performance significantly by using web cache. Um, and I, I sent a, a link uh, for a video that we'll probably put out on Twitter a little while ago um, where we did these performance comparisons. Uh, uh, but the next thing that we started exploring with were, were pure native NFS mounts for both Windows and Mac. Um, and as a result of that, we've been able to increase performance significantly over web cache and reduce a lot of the complexities <coughs> associated with running a cache and file system. Um, so uh, to reinforce what Mike said, it might be a little slow now, but just keep hanging in there, keep trying it. Um, you're always going to get more native, faster <coughs> speed out of a virtual box VM than you will out of Docker. Um, that's just because it's an older technology, it's more matured, it's, it's more tied into the file systems, and it's more proven. Uh, uh, Docker is a server-based technology primarily, I guess, really, and we're kind of appropriating it to turn the local environments into extensions of the servers. That's not exactly what they intended when they, they went down the Docker path. Um, so when you tell Docker that, hey, we want to run local development environments on that, they're like, well, that's cool, but we're managing these Linux <laughs> servers over here. Yeah. Um, so that's been the kind of back and forth. Uh, hang in there, keep trying it. Um, take a look at the video that, that we'll tweet out in a little bit. It's about nine minutes long, but it deals with this specific. And I think Randy, uh, Randy Bay, who does a lot of the DDEV development, has a blog post that benchmark some of the performance differences between these different strategies that you can look at to get a sense of yeah. how the speed increases and stuff. If you go to drug.com, I think it's actually linked on the front page right now. Yeah, and on, but on the Lando side, we're, we're in the next like release or two, we're going to be introducing, uh, I don't think it's exactly the same thing as what you guys are doing, but uh, some, uh, some, some other performance mitigation strategies that we think will perf perf uh, increase, what well, we know will increase the performance significantly for people who are using Mac <coughs> and Windows and have very large sites. Cool. Tess, I saw you speed forward a little. Did you have something on speed? Mm -hmm. Oh. Devil's um, advocate, Linux desktop is really good <laughs> in 2019. GNOME has the default for Fedora or Ubuntu. Like, it installs in like 10 or 15 minutes. It sets up dual boot for you even yeah. if you have Windows. If you're used to a Mac, elementary <clears throat> OS is literally a Mac. It's clip. so fast. <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> fast. Yeah. You can set up some gestures and have like... Yeah, switch oh, desktops with your fingers. Is it will? Yeah, I've got yeah. some. I'm like, you're going to be constantly battling performance on, on other systems, and if it's really concerned with maybe. Yeah. I hear it's the, the Linux desktop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
Yeah, so speaking to the performance, uh, Doxel actually has a, um, a, a sim I guess similar or another um, uh, approach that we're using to uh, mitigate some of the performance issues. So that we still do support Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows. Um, and uh, we do also, and actually for native, for Mac by default, we would actually recommend using uh, the VM solution. So it's a really, really thin VM. Uh, it just contains uh, you know, Linux, the, the base tools for, for Doxel. Um, and, but using that, we get around uh, a good bit of the performance issue. So that's something that's comparing to Linux, uh, it's very similar. Uh, so personally, you mentioned Windows. I actually use Windows as my primary machine at, 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 my, at my office, but uh, what I do is I use a, a Linux server, so I have a Debian server <coughs> that is just connected on the LAN that runs, that runs Doxel. Um, and then just through some wildcard routing with DNS on a, on a domain that I've purchased, I, I can route everything to, uh, I also have a static IP, so that helps, um, but I can route everything to this, this one server that is dedicated for uh, development. Uh, now that actually is using native, native Linux, so I'm very familiar with the speeds that you would expect to get using Doxel or Docker on Linux, um, but then comparing that to my Mac when I'm um, you know, using my laptop, uh, compared that, we, using the VM, I mean, it's it's negligible as far as the uh, performance difference. So, Doxel is something I would probably recommend checking out uh, if you're looking into getting into it now. If you're already familiar with uh, VirtualBox, um, and actually speaking of Drupal VM, uh, there were uh, some uh, some some challenges on getting it installed together and having them run simultaneously. Uh, but on Canopy Studio, is one of our blog posts, I think in the past year, um, we actually have a tutorial on how to get those running and playing well together side by side. Uh, so that's something that... You're talking about Docker and Vagrant side by side? Just to Doc the issue was that they didn't like to be both installed. Yeah, it's with the... Um, I forget the exact issue now. It's been so long. Hyper-V and VirtualBox. I don't think you can have both of them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. Windows. Well, on Windows. Um, so, I mean, this is... The, I'd have to go back and look at the, the, the post, but um, but again, that wasn't something that I I didn't I don't use Drupal VM because you said you use Drupal VM or was it Vagrant Drupal, Drupal VM, VM which is right? So that um, they, they do work. Uh, you you can run them side by side. Or we might have to turn them off and turn them on. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's um, but yeah, I would definitely check that out because the the Doxel VM is lightweight and you still actually get uh, virtually full performance out of that uh, using the virtual machine, um, and then a lot of the same tools too. So you can you know. Can, Still export all your configuration to a YAML file or on one command to, to stand up your site and get all that too. So. Great. More questions? Uh, how has been your experience introducing uh, the these tools to newcomers? Because I think we all agree that Docker is great, uh, but it has a low, like a high entry level. But for example, some of my coworkers use MAM. Uh, for them, MAM, MAM just works. We don't have a very complex system or pages. It's just Drupal and maybe NPM for running SaaS or something like that. But it's, it's complicated when you're introducing some of these tools and you're talking, okay, now you have to know Docker, now you have to know all these specific problems specific to Docker or the tool itself. Uh, Sometimes it's pain, I don't know, four hours, and after long day you get to see it, and I'm just going back to MAM, and in five minutes they get, they have everything set up, but again, MAM is not, in the long term, it's not the best solution, because I, servers, Linux, production, and everything. But how has been your experience? Like, the entry level, how do you introduce, because there's a lot of tools, a lot of things you have to download, and sometimes you, for example, you are in trainings and you don't have the bandwidth to, okay, you have to download these things and you have to have, to have an USB stick or you something like that. Yeah, this is going to piggyback what he said, which is what would you recommend as entry level? You're on a and you need both, but you're maybe not. So I, I'd I can do it from a user level too. Yeah, I'd like. I'd like to interject because I teach beginners, like not developers and different people, and I have to say that each one of the projects has like really good documentation and they have support channels, and um, videos. Yeah, yeah, the videos, yeah, the and, and I'm working, died. I did get to see two of them. And yeah, I'm working with some of the teams 
teams too, to because I'm a beginner, and if I can't follow the documentation, how do we expect? Like I am. I mean, I'm not a beginner, but I'm a beginner in native tech. So we're working together, kind of as a community, to make sure that those docs are in line. And then like the user testing too. Like you get to like step four, and you're just like, what do I do? If you ping one of their channels, they're like super quick about getting back to you. You know, the communities I think are really fantastic in like the Slack spaces and and um, even like the, the camp level and that kind of thing. But like I said, like they're great if you have a suggestion for documentation or your stuff, they'll work with you on like fixing, you know, yeah. reducing that barrier. Yeah. So. We, have like a, we have like a thousand, we have about like a, almost a thousand users on our Slack channel that are mm -hmm. talking about, about Lando. There's a, there's a channel on the Drupal Slack for people as well. I wish they would come over to our Slack, <laughs> um, but there, there's channels there. Doing the same for the other docs on Tech as well. So. I, I have normally don't have any business uh, as an extension of the marketing team. I wouldn't no normally have any. Uh, I wouldn't come across code. I normally ask for requests, but because I do it myself, uh, <coughs> even for entry level, I, I've used both Dev and Lando. And it was super simple. Like I was literally running within a couple hours. Yeah, I, I, one, of, one, one of the product designs that we have that we have for Lando, I, I think probably for you as well, <laughs> is that you don't need to know that Docker exists. You don't, you don't need, need to know, to know that it exists. You don't need to know that it's behind the scenes. You can you can never have heard about it, and it'll be fine. Yeah. We definitely support the it just works philosophy too. So yeah, um, when there's instances where it doesn't just work, rely on the support channels, rely on the communities, get involved in the Slack. It works the exact same way as Drupal. We're all open source projects. Um, we will fix it if you can help us understand what the problem is. Yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, you know, these tools are fairly mature at this point. Um, I'd say that there's very few people that are accustomed to working in now that will not be able to transition to one of these new tools because the learning curve is not like Drupal. Um, it's very flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, if all your sites run Apache and whatever PHP version MAMP comes with, MAMP is fine. It's true, you know? Big so but like, if, if you are that person, congratulations that you've been able to build <laughs> <laughs> that same stuff. And I want to know how you've done it, so please see me after this. <laughs> so I've actually been transitioning my team away from MAP on this very point process. That's what I, that has been my job for the last year. And I've been developing Flight Deck in order to supplant that. And the way that we actually approached it was we made it really stupidly easy to change. So. What we have, what happens is that I usually set up the, the repository with everything in it. So it already has the compose file in it. It already has the settings files in it. Those settings files are already modified to work specifically for and for flight back. And all they really have to do is docker compose up dash d. It starts up the system. It's already configured. The database credentials are already there. My mailhawk is already there. PHP my admin is already there. Everything that they're used to is already there. They just need to start it. And as a result, once it's started, they don't really need to worry about anything else. And if there's an ask for, well, I need to be able to do this, or uh, this one setting I had on, on this, well, like, that should be part of the project. So we should put it in the site repository so it's customized for that site. And that way, everyone gets the same configuration every time. <coughs> You know, I think it's also something to say too. Um, you know, kind of to your question, you know, how hard is it to get set up and get get into? Um, so as you were just mentioning, like you know, you you put together the configuration, and that's similar how we do it too. You know, we actually have people on, on our staff that you know they're doing the initial configuration. But once that initial configuration is done, yeah. the person who's working on the site. So if uh, you know Tom and Tom come behind me and want to work on a site that we've set up. For them, it should be no more than one command. So I mean, you've got you know, your up command. Ours is a you know fin in it, you know for initialize, um, and that's that's it. So I mean, as far as working on the project, I mean, it should take no less than five minutes to spin up your local environment from not not even touching it to the time where you're using the site, uh, or less. Um, I mean, we with some of the you know it comes down to the size of the database and things like that. So it's it's you know each site's going to be a little bit different. <coughs> Um, but yeah, so once you put that initial work into creating that configuration, uh, from that point forward, I mean, it's just really quick. So I mean, it's just a, you know, clone down the repository, run one command, and then it sets everything up for you. Uh, and I would think that's the same for, you know, yeah. Lando and yeah. Yeah. as well. So. Yeah, we, well, def we definitely want like sort of a set it and forget it exactly. philosophy. It's also worth 
highlighting that explicitly is that with MAMP, you don't have the ability to share configurations. You can't work on, on yeah. you know, black box. Right. So, so, so essentially, if you have two developers and they're working on the same site, they might have differences in, in how they, they're using MAMP that might end up creating bugs or discrepancies. Um, most of these, if not all of these, development platforms work on the premise of GitOps to some degree. So you have the ability to check in a common file uh, that's written in YAML uh, that will set up the environment, set up all the services, do everything that needed done, check that into the repository. You can come back to it five years later, run the exact same command, yeah. have the exact same configuration with the exact same versions, and it will still work. Yeah. Um, and you can share that with multiple people. So if you're working on a distributed team, you want to eliminate any discrepancies in development so that you know that what you're building is actually working. Um, it's a great way of doing it, and that's something that MAMP cannot do. Um, there's yeah. another point here regarding MAMP of uh, if you, you, there's the concern of uh, setup time. If your Mac gets hit by a bus, <laughs> yes. well, I was about to say something along those lines for your MAMP setup. And with all of these options, it's running. It. It's all there. It's all in your repo. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can take my computer. I can walk to the restroom right now. I can flush it down the toilet. I can take your computer, and I can have my site running again in five minutes. I can follow you with a camera, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm always going to go, the next camp, you know? It is a hard sell I mean, sometimes for yeah. developers, right? <laughs> just to like, right, well, I'm currently working, I can build these things. And um, for us, the, the biggest change to go into d and Lando was we started with the CI CD, spinning them up using that. And the second that we were running our tests on it, and we had it already done, it's like, well, it's pointless. I might just pull the fit and run my local exactly the same way. So we actually came. I think it's harder to say, let's do it on development, and then we'll do it to the thing, do it to the test. When you actually build it, you've already built this whole configuration for your CI, CD stuff. We use GitLab and GitLab runners and stuff. Mm -hmm. and spin them up, do it. And the second that was all working, you're like, why am I still using MAMP? Yeah. Like, oh, it's, also nice to, it's also nice to be able to run your tests locally. They're yes. faster, you don't have the shame of breaking the build, and everyone being like, but that's this <laughs> kid broke the build. That was, a, that was definitely a, uh, at, like, that moment, like, I'm the odd man out not doing that now. We've kind of proved that it's already worked and it had already been built for our test suite. There's, like, that's a copy of production, and I really should be developing on a copy of production. Yes. What, what, why am I standing here holding out against this yeah. when you realize, you know, you just, you don't start, I don't start, I'll get her off. Yeah. Right? Tess, you had something on destroying your Mac? So, <laughs> <laughs> one of my first computers was a Mac Plus, but this was in 1990. So it was very, very dead by the time I got it. And I even kept it going for three years. So that taught me one thing. You can expect it to crash every 15 minutes. And you might need to reinstall your operating system every week. <laughs> As a result, I don't even trust the underlying operating system in Flight Deck. My, you know, my laptop literally has no, no, uh, no uh, PHP, no Drush, no. no Composer, no anything on it. No. All of it's inside the container. As soon as Docker is installed, that system is developer ready for me. And that's very important because now I'm not only unifying all of the different uh, operational environments necessary in order to stand up a site, I'm also normalizing all the tools across my entire development team. They all use the same version of the tools, so everything works exactly the same for every individual developer. And that also helps because if your Mac gets hit by a bus, as he said, you're, you know, after you initially log in and install Docker, you're basically ready to go after that and don't need anything else. Mac gets hit by a bus, now we can buy a Linux one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's system But after saying that, I've probably bought my last Razor. MacBook Pro. Yeah. Oh, I've got a Linux one, one probably yeah. since yeah. I've got the I've got the Dow, the graphics back's not great. It's just but, like, yeah. Oh, it's man, oh, man. Yes. Like, <laughs> Would you say it's better than like a ThinkPad or something like that? Or? Um, a couple of people on this path. Yeah, so like everything in the box, the drivers, you, know, you don't have to mess with anything if yeah. they build it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice to support the guys that are doing it, right? They're, they're doing the Linux thing and the Pop OS on it, and we're building laptops for Linux. Mm -hmm. um, I've so. had the same experience with my uh, Galaxy S developer edition. Yeah. It, it came with a brew too, and I lived with that for about a week before I could stand it anymore. <laughs> and then I put Arch on it, and it is a beauty. I have never, and the thing with Arch that's unlike a Brutu is that 
Arch is considered a rolling Linux distribution, which means as soon as each individual software project that makes up your desktop updates, you get it, even if it breaks everything. <laughs> I've only had it break once in two years. That has never happened, and I came from running Arch on a MacBook Air. <laughs> I think we have one more question. I, yeah, I have a question. Um, in the last year, I don't know how many people are familiar with Simply Test Me. It was taken over by someone else, and there's a lot of hiccups and bruises and battering that's going on, and it's really become hard to use. Do any of you have any sort of plans to replace that system? Like, where we don't have to do stuff locally, it, it can spin up a site and we can use it when we log into the internet? I, don't know, I kind of like the idea of supporting Simply Test Me a little bit more mm -hmm. and fixing some of those problems. Sure. Because it's a good community mm -hmm. tool that's mm -hmm. very specific to Google. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that DDEV would ever attempt to Re replace the same functionality. But, to, but even helping out, like, you know, because there's these hiccups that are happening that makes it hard to use right now. Right. So. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I think that would take some deeper conversations to really figure out how to align those two. Because I know there's some very specific architectural choices that were made by Simply Test Me uh, that were very close to native in a lot of ways. Um, and, and there's possibly an ethos to keep it that way. Uh, so I think that for, for my perspective, teaching people how to run tests or how to create their own testing environment using these tools um, might be a better way of doing it. And then if they choose to test Modules with it or something like that, then we can also put them there. But I don't think that we're going to be able to replace simple testing. You can tell it really messes up. I like demo. Yeah, simple <laughs> testing. No, it doesn't mess me up. I really appreciate the tool, yeah. but it's become a little hard to use, you yeah. know. So, so just, it wasn't maybe I worded that question wrong, not replaced, but sort of work as a community to help have that online tool. I've, I've had a very discussion with Adam. You know, it's so, like well, they, they inherited this, this uh, like a very big, big thing. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, a lot of our tools do almost exactly the same stuff. And, like the automated Drupal building has been around in different forms in, in a long time. But he's also, he's also trying to be like a good, uh, good custodian of the community mm -hmm. and not just like, it's a hard decision. You can't, you know, it's a hard thing to, to be mm -hmm. that leader. So I feel like uh, we just have to keep, keep trying to work together on that and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But functionality-wise, it's like, Helping people understand how to do what they want from the tools, testing being one of those things, I think is a really good thing. Um, we, we, have, we, have no, we have no plans to build uh, such a thing. Um, we think that building a local development product is hard enough by itself. Um, so we're going to keep doing that for the foreseeable future. Um, that said, there are various Drupal agencies uh, that um, have similar-ish things to Simply Test Me, uh, like preview environments for their code and that sort of thing, like Tugboat, uh, like Tugboat and Provo, um, and De yeah, DevShop. And uh, we, we are we are we are we are talking to some of those people about providing uh, inter inter uh, integrations between Lando and that thing, so you could you could run your Lando file in Tugboat or run your Tugboat file locally. Uh, with Lando and that sort of thing. We're, we're looking at more partnership type things because, uh, again, it's, it's hard to do what we're doing just by itself. So. Okay. Also, cool. too, any CI, CD, Travis, uh, Circle can easily run any one of these solutions right. in it, and you can do a lot of testing with that itself, with like code client or, or whatever other things you wanted to throw at it. Pretty easy. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. There's lightning talks, yes. right, in half an hour. Right, we get it.